Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> welcome to worship at Trinity Lutheran Church. Uh, we welcome any guests we may have with us today, as well as the people who are worshiping with us online. Welcome to all, to God's house. Uh, just one announcement about the service. When we come to communion, you will uh, see the communion hymn. And there's two verses, and uh, we'll si I will sing one verse as the communion assistants come forward and, and receive communion and we get prepared. There'll be a pause in which I announce communion for those that are using the pre-filled packets or those who are worshiping with us online. And then we'll sing the second verse uh, that's in your bulletin as well. Okay. What... Other announcements? Any other announcements? Yes. We've got the uh, our side and camp out June 22nd, just to remind everybody. You, you have the option of coming for the evening and enjoying everybody around the park here or just or stay out all night. But there's a final key in Dr. Church. Okay, that's in about a couple of weeks. Is that a Friday night, you said? That, that's Saturday night. Saturday night, excuse me. Absolutely. That's, that's convenient. Very good. Any other announcements? Well, then let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship through some music. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough.
Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. We are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you guys. The servants of God, your master proclaim and publish abroad his wonderful name. The name all victorious of Jesus extolled, His kingdom is glorious and rules over all. Ascended on high, almighty to save, yet still He is nigh, His presence we have. The great congregation his triumph shall sing, ascribing salvation to Jesus our King. Salvation to God who sits on the throne. Let all cry aloud and honor the Son. The praises of Jesus the angels proclaim Fall down on their faces and worship the Lamb Then let us adore and give Him His right All glory and power and wisdom and might All honor and blessing with angels above and thanks never ceasing and infinite love. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our
faith and trust in him, that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God said, called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said. I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave me to be with, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsively. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits, in your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning. More than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Let us stand for the gospel reading. Gospel according to Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again, so that Jesus and the disciples could not even sit down and eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself, he is divided, and he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter the strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, People will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they said to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, 
And they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. All right, children. I need children. Come on down. Oh. How about, you, how about you come up here? Can you bring them up here? I'll put these out of Come on up here. Come on up here on this step. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Right, right up here. Come up here. Yeah, come up here. Yeah, come up here. There you go. This is the way I don't have to bend down so far. Good morning. What do you think this is going to be? Huh? Needs a foundation. Now what do you think it looks like? It's a house. Yeah, it's, a, it's got roof and sides. And it's a nice house. It's an A-frame house, isn't it? Looks like an A. Yeah. You know, what's holding that house together? Actually, it's this strip right along here. It's kind of connecting the two pieces together, isn't it? Yeah. What if I cut that strip in half? What do you think would happen? Let's see. It collapsed, didn't it? It needed that strip to be held together. And Jesus told us that a house that is divided against itself cannot stand. It cannot stand up. It will collapse. And he said, if Satan is divided against himself, he can't stand either. See, the people were accusing Jesus of doing things in the name of, of Satan. Not in the name of God, not with the Spirit of God, but in the name of Satan and with the power of Satan. And Jesus says, Satan can't do good things. He, he doesn't heal people. He tries to destroy them. He doesn't bring love. He brings hate. And that divides people. And so if he, if, if he were to try to do something good, he would actually be against himself. And like this house, divided, he would collapse. Yeah. You know, you know, sometimes that can happen to families. Sometimes it can happen to a country. And we get divided. Huh? We get going against one another. And that family or that nation will eventually collapse. What's going to keep them together? You, you know, for my family, what has kept us together is God's love. I know that God loves me. And I know that God loves my wife. And I know that God loves my children. And it's that love that has kept us together for years and we haven't come apart yet my kids have moved away but that love is still there now i got grandkids yeah we're adding to our house 
Yeah? Always keep the love of God in your heart, in your life, in your families, in your communities, in your nation. In fact, in the whole world. Because God loves the whole world. And that is what will keep us from falling apart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the most powerful force in the world is your love. Bring it to us through your words, through Jesus and the Spirit of Christ, through his Spirit of love. Keep us together. Keep us from falling apart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Don't forget your suckers. grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a movie, oh it's been some years ago now, and its title was, it's a mad, 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 mad world. And it was filled with all kinds of comedic stars, uh, Jonathan Winters, Milton Berle, Ethel Merman, yeah, Sid Caesar, and the list could go on and on. And in the opening part of the, of the movie, the character played by Jimmy Durante, he gets in an automobile accident, and it, is, it happens to be a fatal one, but it takes a while for him to, to die, and the people that are going someplace, passing by, they stop, and they think, well, maybe we can help, or maybe we can do something, you know, and so... There's several of these people that have gathered, and, uh, and Jimmy, Jimmy's character tells them about some money that he stole from a bank and buried in a certain location and was on his way to claim, to, 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 get, to dig it up. But he says, I know I'm not going to make it. Uh, his injuries were too severe. So he tells them where the treasure is. He gives them the name of the city, and he gives them the name of a park in the city. And then as a final clue, he says, it's buried under the big W. And of course, that's the, that's the mystery. What is the big W? Well, the group, they all get in their vehicles, and they scurry off to, the, to get to the treasure. And, uh, and, the, and the movie's about the antics sometimes silly, sometimes kind of serious, that happen along the way that are kind of uh, holding them up from getting to this treasure. And, uh, oh, there's a car chase, for instance. There is an airplane uh, ride. There, Jonathan Winters even tries to ride a bicycle to get there. But finally, they all arrive at the city, and they all arrive at the park, and the audience sees them scurrying back and forth around the park, looking for the big W. And suddenly one of the characters stops, and he looks, and he sees it. It is palm trees that have been bent to shape like a big W. And the treasure is buried in the ground underneath the center of those palm trees. They all happen to be there at that time, and, and they all gather around, and they all dig up the treasure. And now the task is, 
how to divide it. And they say, well, uh, we shouldn't divide it equally because you, you guys are a couple and you are single and so it, you, you really can't divide it up because you were together and, you know, and, and they just were going crazy because they couldn't figure out a way of dividing the treasure. And, and, and they were divided amongst themselves, arguing. And finally, one of the characters uh, played by Spencer Tracy, he's actually a police lieutenant. He has been searching for this treasure ever since it was stolen years ago. And he has joined the group in order to reclaim it and take it back to the bank from which it came. Well, finally, after all this commotion, uh, Spencer Tracy just kind of takes the satchel, tells him who he is, and goes off to his car to drive away. And one of the characters says, how do we know he's going to take it to the bank? How do we know he's not going to keep it for himself? And sure enough, he was right. Spencer was dis, uh, disgusted with his pension, and so he wanted to supplement it. He was going to do this with the money. And he takes off. And of course, everybody takes off the chases on again. And there's more shenanigans, more chaos. And finally, they all end up in the hospital because they have tried to, it's, it's, it's just chaos. They, they've been swinging on fire trucks and so forth and they all are injured, they end up in the hospital. And Ethel Mervyn comes in, she is not hurt, and she says, she, she starts scolding them for their disarray and their disagreements and, and this new mess they've gotten themselves in. And someone is eating a banana and takes the banana peel and throws it out on the floor. And she comes by and slips on it, falls right on her tush. And everybody starts laughing hilariously. It is a fitting way to end a movie that has talked about it's a mad, 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 mad world. Yeah. You ever feel that way? Do you ever feel that things are in chaos? Sometimes our personal lives can be affected that way. But a community can be affected that way. A church can be affected that way. A nation can be affected that way. And we look around us and we say, my gosh, everything is in chaos. It's a mad, insane world we live in. When Jesus came on the scene, that's what the religious leaders and his own family thought about him. His family said he's out of his mind doing all these weird things like healing people and casting out demons and talking about things that are so against the, the, the standards of today, especially the religious ones. He says, he's nuts. And the religious leader said, no, he has the spirit of Beelzebul. That's the devil. That's Satan. And he's doing it out of that influence. But he's mad. Yeah. William Bennett was at one time the Secretary of Education, and uh, he gave a speech. This was back in uh, 1993 to the Heritage Foundation. And he spoke about the difference between the nation as he saw it uh, then and the way it was uh, three decades ago. And he said, uh, the, uh, the economy has tripled, but violent crime has gone up 560%. Divorces have doubled, and uh, and he went through this whole litany of things that have gotten worse as time has gone on. He said, you know, back in the 1940s, they asked teachers, what is their worst problems? They said, uh, 
speaking out of turn, chewing gum, noise in the classroom, running in the halls. And he said, today, it's uh, alcohol and drugs and abuse and suicide. It, it's gotten so much worse. And he said, the, the worst of it all is that people seem to be getting used to these things. We're no longer outraged by them. We're no longer surprised even. It just seems to be what, what's going on. And he said, it's not good that we say these are just the way things are instead of it's not the way it ought to be. He said, and probably the worst of all is that we've lost our spirituality. We've lost our spiritual foundation. You know, the church used to be a stabilizing agency. It, it stabilized morality. But now people are ridiculing the church. Just as they ridiculed Jesus for the good things he was doing. Gosh. How do we deal with such a mad, mad, mad world? Huh? Well, for one thing, the way God dealt with us is that he came into it. As his son, Jesus. And he did what was necessary to bring some sanity. When people were sick, he healed them. And it didn't matter which day it was. It could be Sabbath. But that's all right. He cast out demons. He, uh, he brought sanity when people had lost their minds. He brought forgiveness. And people were saying, you can't forgive. You're not God. And they said, you're, in fact, you're Satan. And he even exposed that lie. That's how he dealt with that one. He, 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 you know, Jesus talks about the unforgivable sin. And because they had said that he was casting out demons by the, the demon. And he said, how can Satan be uh, divided? How can he be against himself? Satan would do these kinds of things. It's not of his character. He can't. And if you are attributing these things to him, you are taking what actually God has done and attributed it to Satan. That's how crazy we've got. He proved them wrong. And, and when it relates that as the unforgivable sin, I, I think that it's not a forgivable a sin because it's not something you forgive. It's a lie that you expose and that's what Jesus did. He exposed the lies that Satan was giving the people. It cost him a lot. It cost him his life. But that's how Jesus brought God's sanity into an insane world. Anybody remember Joe Lewis? Boxer? World champion boxer? Yeah. He fought for the, uh, as, as entertainment for the troops during World War II. And uh, he and a friend, uh, Harvey Stone, were going to a performance and they were kind of late. And uh, so Joe was maybe riding a little fast and, and he accidentally hit a cab. And then he pulled over and the cabbie got out furious, of course. And when he saw that it, it was a black, it infuriated him even more. This is back in the 40s, you remember. And he uh, came over and he hurled every racial slur in the book. Every insult he could think of, he hurled at Joe. He didn't recognize him. As uh, Lewis said, they often didn't. Especially when he was wearing a uniform. And finally the man said, get out of that car right now and we're going to duke it out. Uniform or no uniform. And Joe just sat there, didn't say a word. 
And finally the man exhausted his rage and he turned around and he drove off. And his friend Harvey Stone said, she was flabbergasted. He said, well, why didn't you get up and, and, and at least give him a, a tap? You know, you're the, you're the world champion boxer of the world. You, you, you could have, you know, really done something. And, and he said, uh, Joe said, well, you know, if uh, Enrico, Enrico Caruso, if he were insulted in that way, would he have sung an aria? It was, that was a, 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 he sang beautifully, but would that have solved the problem, do you think? Probably not. And what he was meaning is that getting up and fighting, even though it was, uh, he was good, you know, it wouldn't have solved the real issue either. So instead he decided to bring calm to a situation that could have been very violent, of course. A couple of things I wanted to leave with you. If there's a phrase that I try to remember, most of the time I do. It's actually an acronym. It's PTA. It stands for pause, think, and then act. What is a way that will bring peace and calmness into a situation of chaos and disorder. Sometimes it takes a while to think about that. Yeah. But I think that uh, our God is a God of peace. And by the way, one other thing is, I think I'm going to be very careful if I ever try to demonize anyone for what they do. It doesn't work out real good but instead bring calmness and peace into what can be, on many levels, a mad, 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 mad world. We all are one we all are one in call Our very gifts united By Christ the Lord of all A single great commission Compels us from above To plan and work together That all may know Christ's love by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the Church, the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers, after each petition to the words, uh, merciful God, the congregation's response is, receive our prayer. Gracious God, God of abundance, God of healing, you pour your grace upon us each and every day. You come into our world to bring us peace in the midst of chaos, to give us sanity in the midst of madness. Father, send that spirit to us each day. Merciful God. Dear Lord, grow and restore portions of this uh, beautiful creation of yours. Those that need growth, those that need restoration, healing. Give us the spirit to bring order and peace into what at, at times is a mad world. Gracious God, merciful God, Lord in heaven, there is chaos in personal lives too. There is disease, injury, <clears throat> all kinds of things that prevent us from gaining and retaining the good health you intend for each of us. Send your healing spirit to bring healing to the madness of disease. Bring your spirit to the people that are lonely and isolated, who need companionship. Bring your spirit, your healing spirit, to leaders as they work out ways to bring the world closer together rather than pulled apart. Father, give us the spirit that looks at others rather than only at ourselves. Merciful God. Lord, we pray for Shirley Scribner, who's going through cancer. Give her the comfort of your presence and your strength. Give to Donna and Debbie the same things as they have need. And give that to people that we now name before you. Merciful God. Lord, moments of death can seem like the most chaotic times, especially for those that are close to the one who has died. But you bring the comfort of a new life for the people who have died. Bring that comfort to those that are going through the grief process, which can also seem so chaotic. We pray for the family of Denny McGrain, Denny is the father-in-law of Pastor Merkel's and Carol's son. He has cancer. No, oh, I'm sorry, he's passed away. Just informed. As they prepare for his funeral, be with them. Merciful God. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us for we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, who brought sanity to a mad world. Amen.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and call us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, the body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for the creation of the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your truly church, now and forever. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Will the communion assistants please come forward? <laughs> Around you, O Lord Jesus, Will those who are communing, communing with the pre-filled packets please take and open your bread, the body of Christ given for you, and those of you who are worshiping with us online, the same. And then the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. As we come forward, we'll sing the second verse of our song. Around and heed, O oh Lord, your call, your word of 
body of Christ given for you. May Jesus bless you and keep you in his love. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Jesus bless you and keep you in his love. Amen. And may you also know the love of Jesus. Bless you, little brother, too. The body of Christ given for you. May Jesus bless you and keep you and keep you together. Yes. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The morning our song shall rise to May the body thee. and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and holy, keep you in the holy, holy, merciful and mighty God. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray, amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
life song. 